Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's... Above all, prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God says to man, his first command, he says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. God deals with one of his sons, as it were, Joseph. He is in slavery. He is a slave to Potiphar. But the scripture says that Joseph prospered in his master's house. That sounds really like an oxymoron because there is Joseph the slave prospering in his master's house. Slaves don't own anything. Yet the scriptures say that he prospered. It means then that prosperity has greater dimensions than we have been made to believe. And during this month, we'll be exploring different dimensions of prosperity. For the last two weeks, we've been really releasing it because on the 3rd of September, we had our major, major, and I'm saying it again, major financial workshop. We sent people out of this place loaded with information which we believe if they implement what we taught during the workshop, more than likely they will become at least financially viable in short order. Good morning, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the Covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions. It's your date with destiny, the television arm of our media ministry. Amen. We are in a season of God just pushing us forward. He said, I don't want you to stay right there. I want you to get up and prosper. So, what we are going to be doing in these uh, programs over the next three weeks is to give you excerpts from the teachings that we did. We are going to be touching on simple business ideas. Simple business ideas that you don't have to put out much money for. That was my session during the financial seminar. So we're going to just release that to you, this program. Amen. Simple ideas for wealth generation. Simple what? Ideas. For what? Wealth generation. I like how my boy sitting there. That goal it up. That's, that's not penny, you know. That's goal he's sitting along on. But to get there, you know how hard he worked? So he's not relaxing. Wouldn't it be nice to sit down on a stack of dollars by, I, I, I mean, um, um, the blue ones. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Let's read. My salary or wage is a bag of seeds, not a reward for hard work. Why? Did I say that? Let's read. If I see my salary or wage as a reward, 
I will be always a consumer and spend it all on treating myself. In other words, somehow there is this syndrome called a call to the mall. Anybody ever had that yet? <laughs> it's a terrible thing. You can hardly resist it, you know? <laughs> and it seems to come only when your money is on the way. You're going to have to learn how to fight the call to the mall. And you decide at what time you go to the mall and what you buy from the mall. Because if you don't, you know, they have, they have, they have a word that, that rhymes with mall what, as to what happens when a dog bites you. You are mauled by the dog. Well, you'll be mauled at the mall. All your finances will disappear. Why? Because I work hard. Hear the argument. Hear the rationale. I work hard whole week, whole month. I deserve a reward. Nothing wrong in that. But do you have another stream of income to make up for the deficit that you surely will have if that's the kind of attitude you, uh, you, you, you deal with uh, or you work when you get your money, your salary. Your salary is not a reward. Let's see what it is. Let's read. If I see it as a bag of seeds, I will seek ways and means to invest it. Because once you have a seed in your hand, your, a seed makes a demand on you. A seed tells you, you cannot eat me if you want a harvest. Uh, let's say it's money. The money in your hand says, you cannot spend me on consumer items if you want another stream of income. Last night, those who, who were here, I, I told you about that, that uh, uh, money is like water. Once you put water in a container, water seeks to get out. Water does not like containers. Water was made to flow. The molecular structure of water says, give me free expression. Let me move from a gradient high up to the sea, low down. If you put water in a tank, water going to probe that tank to see the integrity of the material. And when it finds a weak spot, it's going to put pressure on it until a leak shows up. And if you don't fix the leak, it's going to empty out. After all that effort to get the water, you lose it. Well, money is the same way. Money is like water. That's why they say money flows. Huh? That's why they call it your current account. Huh? Uh, it's also shocking too eh? when you really get good, good money. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so when you get money and you don't have a plan for it, it probes your integrity. It probes the integrity of your character. It probes the integrity of your maturity. And if you are the person, obviously, what do those, those um, drug addicts do? They, they, integ they have lost their integrity. Huh? And once they get money in their hand, in fact, they fight to get money. They rob you to get money because the money that they get has a way of, uh, of leaking out of them by making them seek after uh, satisfaction from the cocaine or the alcohol, as the case may be. Uh, 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 there are men who, who work uh, CPEP and all those places. As soon as a fortnight pay comes, watch the snack it. Because their integrity or the integrity of the character has weak spots. And the weak spot, the weakest spot is the alcohol and the cigarette and the gambling. My question to you, what is the area in your life when, that when money comes, it gets agitated? You need to check it out. You need to check it out because if you check yourself over the last 10 years, add up how much money you have gotten. You think you didn't get money. You check it, you'll be amazed. You must have gotten nearly a million dollars. What happened with it? Because when you got it, you saw it as a reward. Spend it because more coming. 
or in the book I have coming, uh, uh, um, Common Mistakes Men Make, I talked about that. A lot of men, uh, I remember when we were growing up 30 years ago, 30, and even before that, one of the big things was to have a job on the port. Because when those fellas got back pay, in those days, 30,000, 50,000, I mean, you used to feel like a millionaire. Many of them died paupers. Because the money they got probed the integrity of their character. And some had women with children in different places. And the law stole. I know it's so funny, the same wife that didn't give none had to... Any, anyway. All right. uh, let's continue. Hey, this one blew my mind. God has employed my employer to provide me with seed or capital for eventually investing in my own business. That's why you need to love your boss. Your boss has been employed by God. Don't quarrel with your boss. Don't call him Hitler. That's why you're stifling on the job. You're getting gassed. See your boss as somebody whom God has appointed. Huh? To what? For what? Your boss, God said, you are my trader. This is my child. When he or she offers you skills and experience, you pay my child. Give my child the capital you need, he, he needs. And when my child gets it, I will deal with my child. So when your boss playing tests, hello, you just give God some notice. Boss, God, your employer, the boss, trying to stress me, fix. <laughs> See it like that, and I'm telling you, you will never be on a picket line. Listen to me, the duke or the, um, the duke, the king, <laughs> could come and say, come out with us. We were, we were only, no, no, we were. Tell him we're not doing that. The ultimate boss, my ultimate employer, he has shown me another way. So while the sun shining and the rest are burning, I am streaming live. <laughs> live money running down. Good. Let's move to the next one. Yeah, 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 you had to push me. Right. Let, look at this. If I set myself, let's read together, if I set myself a time frame as to when this will take place, I will find interest-bearing accounts into which I'll make regular deposits of uh -huh, during the period. What will be my most lucrative interest-bearing account? Say it. Destiny, credit. Right. See? That's why I was such a good teacher when I used to teach. I gave answers. <laughs> Let's move, move on. Right. No, we missed, we missed one. Take me back. Right. Let's read. I will have a nest egg to use as collateral for seeking a loan for a financial institution. That's a one, one, one of the things we, t we talk about is setting a five-year plan. If you don't have cash coming in readily as, uh, uh, as other people have, every month you're turning over uh, a good bit uh, and, and uh, you have plans to invest later. Some of us, with the way the money is moving, we could do it now. But the rest of us are going to have to take a period of time. And you're putting the money where you would not touch it. You're putting the money where you would not touch it. Right. Destiny Credit Union is a safe place. You can tell you. Hallelujah. It's guarded by angels. Sword. All right. I, I, I want you to know that if you take that attitude towards money that comes in, 
and I'm not just going to say salary, I'm talking about income, then by the time you're ready to go to the bank for a loan, which will now be Destiny Credit Union, and you sit for a loan, you now have a substantial amount onto which you can now pile the extras, the extra percentage that the credit union is giving out um, based on your shares. Are, are, are we understanding that? It's important to note that you cannot borrow what you did not deposit. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Good. Right. Look at this next one. What the scripture says? A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. We, 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 we're going to teach some more about that, because how does this come in? It, it sounds like it, it does not uh, compute at all. Uh, but the good man leaving money and the wealth of the sinner being laid up for the just. If you, if you read the, 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 the passages before and after, it will give you more uh, um, clarity on it. But the key to the whole thing is, we could say that for the next 20 years, for the next 20 centuries, that the wealth of the wicked, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, it will never come to, to you individually unless you find a way to tap into it. I tell you, I tell you some time ago, one of the brothers of church who was working for uh, um, one of the Sabgas, a Syrian, and you know what Sabga told him? He said, right now, I have enough money and property for 15 generations. He said, I don't have to sell a next car. I don't have to run a next company. If I retire now, what I have laid down, 15 generations could get from it. Hear what the scripture says. For us, we are deemed a good person if we have money, property for two generations. The children's children. That man have for 15. And they don't serve God like we do. But they believe the Bible. They know how to sow. They know how to work with one another. Notice that they hardly ever intermarry. They intramarry. Money begets money. And stop believing that God will send a rich man to marry you or a rich woman. <laughs> Lord, I'm praying, Lord, there are many out there, God, who need to know you, and they need someone like me, God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's read this. As righteous and prophetic as I may be, the wealth of the sinner will never come to me if I just sit idly or even if I pray and fast every day for the rest of my life. Somebody told us to be poor, and then they came over here and say, being poor is no problem. God has the wealth of the wicked waiting for you. It's coming. I feel it. It's coming. All you need to do is to sow $1,000 today. I feel it. That $1,000 is the key, the channel from the sinner. It ain't reaching. If you have the wrong attitude, it will come, but not to you. You're going to land in my yard. Because, well, let me ask you the next big question that's going to make you wake up and hold your head and ball. If the Lord allows you to get a million dollars right now, what plans do you have for it? Oh, I hear roti. Ah. Uh, because most of us, we only have wishes. We don't have plans. Think about it. Look at this next one. Real wealth transfer demands that I must provide a basket for collecting it. Watch this. The wealth of the wicked is not some mysterious thing. How do people get wealthy? Business people get wealthy because people come to buy from them. Therefore, it is the people that have the money, not the business people. Therefore, it is the people that have the money, not the bank. Therefore, 
if the wealth of the wicked comes from the people who go to borrow or who go to buy or who go to spend in their establishment, then I must find a way of diverting those people on their way to, of intercepting them on their way to, because it's people that have money. Even the bank knows that. If on Monday morning, everybody who has an account, let's say in Republic Bank in Starlight, decide to go for the money, I guarantee you in five minutes after it opens, they will shut down the system. Why? Because they know the money they have is in trust from the people. Well then, what I need to do is to set up a business or set up some type of establishment where while on their way to buying from over, so where they are custom going or depositing money over, so to where they are custom going, they can now cross the street and come by me. Destiny anointing oil. Every time we come to the set, we anoint our hands and release faith. We release anointing. And we expect your faith to hook up with our faith, plus the anointing with which we are releasing it, so that yokes will be destroyed. If you notice, at the end of the parable, when the man who made nothing out of what he got, came to the master, the master called him a wicked servant. Because religion is a wicked spirit. It makes people with potential end up with nothing. And my declaration to you today is that potential is God-given, but success, prosperity, is my responsibility. I'm anointing my hands, and I'm going to stretch forth my hands, and I'm decreeing the attitude that has been cultivated in you and so many people who are sitting by waiting for God to do stuff is a religious one and we're breaking that today. Your potential will spring forth. Amen. I'm stretching my hands forth and I'm decreeing right now a new mindset concerning prosperity. A new mindset pertaining to advancing yourself financially. I break the spirit of lack thinking. I break the spirit that makes you believe that God admires you because you are poor. I prophesy to you uh, that poverty is not a, a good testimony of the God that we serve. I prophesy that you shall prosper and God is going to get the glory. He has given us the power to get wealth so that what? He will fulfill the covenant that he made with our fathers. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We give God the praise for his goodness. Amen. Accompanying the workshop was an expo of the various businesses that we have in Divine Disney Worship Center. We were bowled over when we were finished with the, le the lectures and we went over to the multipurpose hall to see how many businesses were there displayed. Let's take a little look at some of the exhibits that were there, plus one of the uh, uh, sh uh, uh, business owners being interviewed by our television crew. Amen. That comes my way 
We expect that the next time we have an expo at Divine Destiny Worship Center, you would have caught on to it and you would have your little section. Even if it's Tamron Balls, bring it. That's a business item in the name of Jesus. As we have uh, been notifying you every week, we have three radio programs. One on Monday at 9 p.m. at 98.1. One on Tuesday, it's called Living the More Abundant Life on 107.1, sponsored by Bees Ice Cream. And one on Friday at 3 p.m. on 98.1 again, Ask Pastor Gemma. We want you to just log in to those programs and receive. Amen. And this is weekend. Uh, so this Sunday, we are having another I mean, powerful services. These last few months since the year began, and even before the year began, and even before last year, <laughs> the glory of God is so strong in this place. My word. He is not just visiting with us. He is dwelling among us. Why not come and walk in the same glory in which we are walking? Amen. So until we meet again, I'm Apostle Emmanuel Vivian Duncan. And on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and the Covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, declaring to you, you began life as a winner, don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea. Because when God made you, he had a destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet you at Divine Destiny Worship Center. Amen. God bless you. Next time on Divine Destiny Worship Center's program, this program, it's your date with destiny, you will hear. So let's look at the definition of a successful business. A commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Think about that for a moment or repeat it. A, su a, a successful business is a commercial, profitable enterprise that works without you. You continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.